I am thrilled to formally announce this year's award winner, Alice Ray. She is, yes, let's clap at the all tell you. <laughs> Alice is the founder of Ripple Effects, and she was nominated by Dr. Maurice Elias, director of Rutgers Social, Emotional, and Character Development Lab at Rutgers University. And I think when you hear the following comments by Dr. Elias, you will agree how worthy Alice is of this award. Alice has been instrumental in creating technology applications of CASEL select programs, primarily for young children and upper elementary and secondary level youth. Her award-winning research-based soft software operationalizes the idea of teaching young people how to think and not what to think. It's under her leadership that Ripple Effects has created software for young people to learn how to address numerous personal issues in highly tailored and personalized ways. She has developed procedures for training and coaching educators and mental health professionals in the use of her pedagogical tools that helps, um, I'm sorry, most recently, she has developed an animatronic service dog named Bouncy. And if you haven't been down to the Ripple Effects booth, please go check out uh, Bouncy. Wonderful way to help pre-K through second grade students calm themselves and feel supported and safe. Alice is also the founder of Set the Second Step Curriculum. She exemplifies that can-do spirit of Dr. Myrna Shore and the dedication to problem solving and critical thinking. You know, um... I'm really honored, uh, especially with this award, because it honors a woman at the base of the social emotional learning movement. The way to find common ground is to genuinely open our own hearts and our own minds and our own souls and our physical beings. And one way that I think helps with that is to look to the earned wisdom at the base of the community, not to the professional knowledge that comes at the top of the academia, to find out what's working, what's most true, and what is the language that's appropriate for this community at this time. The last thing I want to say, though, is just remembering the roots, that when we uh, develop Second Step, it was not some new age thing so that the emotionally rich or the spiritually rich could just get richer. It wasn't like every kid is going to completely thrive all the time. It was simply to reduce the harm, to relieve the suffering, to keep kids out of jail, to keep predators off kids' backs. So at that time, I said, what would it take for the next generation of kids not to grow up to be predators? And the research I did was going around and listening to practitioners and doing library research. That was before the internet. And, and indeed, I came up with these same core competencies that are the castle things. But the idea is every kid needs these things. But every kid doesn't need them in the same way, at the same time, or for the same reasons. And that's what led me to use technology, is say, if we want to really personalize social-emotional learning, then let's see if there's a way to make it context-specific, specific to each individual kid's need. That little girl who was molested last night, the last thing she needs is to go to school and be told she needs more empathy. You know, that boy who uh, is facing dis discrimination just by walking down the street, or being in a car, he doesn't really need to be told more about taking someone else's perspective. He needs more support for standing up for himself and his rights and for the freedom that we all deserve.